So could we start by you introducing yourself and your books a little bit? Um, yes, uh, well, my name's Ken Preston and I uh, write in different genres. I write in uh, adult genres, horror and suspense and thriller. I write uh, young adult books and I write romance as well. Oh right, quite an eclectic mix then. Yeah, yeah. Yes, quite a quite a broad a broad genre. So obviously you've written written lots of books then. So you're obviously very experienced. Lots of uh, lots of uh, writing behind you. So when you're starting a new project, a new book, where do you start? What's the very first thing that you do? Well, I mean, yeah, it's funny that you should talk about you being experienced in that because I think a lot of authors feel this way every time you start a new project it feels like you don't know what you're doing and then you're back at the beginning again and that none of the other books and the experience of writing those books um, matter and of course they do really you do get some that that experience does does follow through but it always just start feels like you're standing in a, a dark forest with no idea of where you're going so this I, i've I've tried out different ways of starting um, my latest project. I'm starting with a title, a book cover, and a tagline be Ooh, before I've even written any of the the story, just to get the high concept mm -hmm. in, and then work from there. Other times I've started just with a situation: two people in a certain situation. How are they going to get out of that? What's going to happen next? And and feel my way through the story, much like, say, I was, I was reading it, I don't know what's going to happen next. But that, that can, you can get tied up in corners doing that and have to backtrack. So there's, there's lots of different ways, really, of, of, of starting a story. So it's not one size fits all, then? It? it certainly isn't, and not even for one uh, particular author. I think many authors do it, start projects different ways. So it sounds to me like there's sort of a million ways almost that you can you can get started. So in terms of what makes a really good story, a really gripping read, would you say that there's equally sort of a million things that might do so, or are there sort of one or maybe two really specific things that you try to get in to get your, your stories as kind of gripping and as exciting as they can be? Yes, it's an interesting question. Um, there are probably lots of tiny different things you can do to make a story good, but I always think the the main the main overriding element of any story, whether it's a short story or a novel, is the the people in the story, the people themselves, the, the characters. Character, yeah. yeah, and I think um, the reader needs to be emotionally invested in some way in those characters. Um, most of all, you know, liking the main character, wanting them to overcome. Um, the obstacles and that's the other element of a good story actually uh, conflict so right. your main character needs to achieve something whether it's a romance and she or he wants to uh, initiate a romance with someone else or um, whether it's a thriller uh, or a ticking time bomb type adventure where that's the hero tension. needs to get somewhere but there always needs to be something that somebody wants and something or someone that's stopping them and that conflict is there so yeah I think you need to invest in your characters get a really likeable character even if the character's um, a villain of the piece or something I think that you need to have some emotional investment in there maybe you maybe you hate them or something but so um, the reader has to care in some respect that yes. they, can even, they can care about really wanting to see them get their come up at the yes sort of thing. that's yeah. right yeah but care about the characters and introduce introduce conflicts i think i cannot think of any genre in story writing uh where if you didn't have conflict the story would work because it, it wouldn't whether it's romance comedy drama horror thriller whatever all across the board there needs to be there needs so to be conflict of yes. some kind. Yes, you can and write it, anything as yeah. long as there's a problem somewhere. Yeah. So it can yeah. be a tiny, it can be yeah. a tiny problem, or it can be a world destroying problem, but there has to be a problem somewhere. Yeah. And we have to care about our characters. Over That's right. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay, so we've heard about sort of getting going and, and knowing how to make people care about your characters and your situation, but I imagine that there's some days where the writing is just not happening for whatever reason when you've got a bit of writer's block. 
So what do you do to get over that? Do you, do you work on something else or, or what would you what was your advice for overcoming writer's block be? Yeah, writer's writer's block can be uh, difficult. Um, and I think a lot of it really comes down to fear, certainly for myself. When I write, I want it to be perfect as soon as it goes down, and that never that never happens. And despite all the books I've written and the short stories, I still suffer from that, you know. Um, so you have to get over that fear, really, of it of it being perfect the first time, because it won't be. You'll need to rewrite it. You'll need to redraft it. It helps if you get somebody else to look at it as well once you've got it as as good as you can. Um, one big thing that helps me is I have a little timer and I'll set the timer for say 15 or 20 minutes and it's got a beeper that goes off when it gets to zero so I set the timer and then I have to write as many words as I can in that time and so that stops you from that gets over that fear of, of looking for perfection because you're just putting the words down as fast as you can what's your record how many how many have you got in 15 minutes what's in 15 minutes um I don't know what my record is. Uh, I think I'm pleased if I get 300. That's a nice amount. If I get over 300, then I'm, I'm it's a doing good really well. Yeah. I'm not sure I've got 400 yet. <clears throat> Pardon me. But yeah, 300 is a nice, a nice number to get in 15 minutes. Yes, yes. And it's not too scary of a number to, no. to aim for. Sometimes the whole blank page thing and thinking you've got to fill that's it up. That's right. The, thousands and thousands of words. That's it's a right. Bit yeah. yeah. But if, if you did that, um, if you did that 15 minute chunk four times with a break in between of say five minutes then you're up, you're only up to about an hour and 20 minutes i would think and you'll probably get over a thousand words oh. and that's a nice that's a nice chunk of writing yeah so when yeah. you say it like that it doesn't sound too that's right. at all so that's yes right. i will bear that one in mind yeah. for sure <laughs> and then you know i'm a numbers guy in this way i'm terrible at maths but <laughs> if you write a thousand words a day then um you know, in a week you've got a substantial short story of 7,000 words. Mm -hmm. um, in three months you've got a novel, you know, so... Yes, it's, it's amazing it's, when you say it like that. That's yeah. right, yeah. Yes, yes. Oh, brilliant. Well, next time I am stuck for writing, I will definitely give that one a go and I'll, I'll let you know if I might get time and see if I can right. beat your record. And, and the beauty of it is as well, you might end up with 300 words of rubbish that you think, no, that's, I'm just <laughs> going to delete that. But quite often it will just spark your mind, get it fired up a bit. Almost like you're at the gym and you're warming up before mm -hmm. you start exercising, mm -hmm. or it sometimes triggers fresh ideas. Yes. So even though you don't use that, it's still a useful it's what you said exercise. Again. That's yeah. a bit rubbish, but oh, it's given me an idea mm, if I did this instead. Right. Yeah. Let's get the creative juices flowing, that's as right. they say. Yeah. Yes, yes, brilliant, fantastic. Okay, so we've had our idea for our, our characters and, our, and what our conflict's going to be. We had a bit of writer's block, but we got over that, so that's great. So now we are ready to kind of get going and, and, and write the short story or the novel. So, what advice would you have for aspiring writers who want to um, who want to get published or, or even just finish a book, which is uh, quite an achievement, isn't it? Oh, it is. Yeah, I mean, if, if you if you writing a short story or writing a novel. Um, you know, achieving either of those is quite an achievement because a lot of people set out to do it or would like to do it and they never actually get around to doing it or never finish, they abandon. And also, um, just off topic ever so slightly, there is a, the difference between novels and short stories is less than you would think. They're both quite difficult to write, I find. It's just that a novel takes a lot longer than a, a short story and, uh, you know, depend, demands more um, discipline. But yeah, a tip for aspiring writers, I think, would link back to what I said earlier, really, and write every day. Certainly try and write, sort of, say, five days a week, set a regular habit. So rather than saying, right, I'm going to write a full-length novel by Christmas or something, yeah. instead say, right, I'm, I'm going to aim to write every day or five days a week, say, mm -hmm. or six days a week. And rather than setting a goal, which then quite often we fail to achieve, you, you focus on setting a habit mm -hmm. and the, the habit of writing and that way you're constantly producing um, work. So I think that's probably the most important thing I've learned really, mm. focusing on the, on the task and the repetition and yes. the, the yes. habit of writing rather than setting goals which I, I will fail at and yes. then I'll feel yeah. terrible failing at the goal yes, set myself. Yes, and it will you know, put you off doing it. That's right, yeah. yes, yes. And presumably as well, the more you write, the more frequently you write, 
the better you get. That's right, yeah. I mean, getting better at writing, I think, is, is a simple matter of reading lots and writing lots, you know, mm -hmm. um, reading your favourite genres, read outside of your favourite genres as well, Ooh, read, read some of the classics and pick up a difficult book, you know, one mm -hmm. of the Man Booker Prize winners or something, yeah, yeah. you know, and, and make your own mind up about it, you know, did it deserve to win a prize? Mm. Or is it is it just turgy? To yes, I could do better than that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, and, and and read either grinding your teeth in envy, wishing you that you were that good, yeah. or you know, you finish up throwing the book across the room because you think, oh, that was rubbish. I could do better than that. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's important to read a lot mm -hmm. and to write a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there are other things you can do, but those are the that to get better as a writer. But yeah. certainly those are two most important things. Yes, and don't probably don't neglect your reading because you're busy writing your own That's novels. Right. You need to you need to keep up with the competition, I would <laughs> say. But, but also like you say, to see what people are doing really See well, what other people are doing, explore. Yeah. 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 Explore different forms of writing, mm -hmm. different genres. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Lovely. So obviously reading quite widely and reading lots of different genres is, is helpful to sort of build your craft. But obviously for this specific competition, we're looking for a short story that is set in 1637 Worcester when, when the plague sort of comes to the city. Um, so that is obviously historical fiction. Um, so would you have any specific advice for writing historical fiction? Is there something that you do a bit differently because you're setting something in the past as opposed to in the modern day? Or is it actually just the same sort of tips as, as writing something set in the modern day or on another planet or, or anything as, as, as exotic as that, so to speak? Um, yeah, the, the principles stay the same. So mm -hmm. you need characters that you care about or you're invested in and you need conflict, you mm -hmm. know, or else, because if, if you don't have conflict, you don't have a story. I think the main way in which um, historical fiction uh, differs is that you're probably going to be wanting to do a, more research mm -hmm. unless you're already an expert on what you're, you're writing obviously but uh, you will need to do some research but um, I wouldn't get bogged down in the research mm -hmm. it's too easy I, I when I've written uh, books set in Victorian London and that I've found myself going down the internet rabbit hole and, and books as well down the rabbit hole of, of, of historical books mm -hmm. becoming fascinated by what I'm reading but finding that most of it I won't actually be using you know mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. certainly do the research and enjoy the research but don't use that as a as a means of not writing putting mm -hmm. off the writing um, you just need because when, when you're reading uh, historical fiction you're not reading it for research, you're still reading it for a story. So the story is always is always um, prime. And I think another tip would be don't try and explain too much either about the historical setting. Um, in the uh, in the introduction, in the first couple of hundred words of the story uh, that is part of the competition, I mentioned rush lights, and I did do my. Uh, I did do my research into yeah, how the interior yeah. of a building in the 1600s would be mm -hmm. lit, but all I have to do really is mention them. You don't have to explain what a rush light is and how it works and that, mm -hmm. um, because if the reader's interested enough, they'll go and they'll go and find out for yes. themselves. I'm sure. Whereas if you have it in the in the text in the story, you box it down mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. slows it down. Yes. So go for sort of specific details but be quite sparing with mm. them so you're not overwhelming people with and then there's this difference and that difference That's there's a right. few things that might pique Just, their interest yeah. to make them go oh i wonder what a rush light is i can go and mm. look that up um, yeah so just touch on these details to give the story atmosphere and a sense of mm. of, of place mm -hmm. but we don't need to go into big great detailed yes um, yes and i always say as well and it's probably it might be a terrible thing to say, maybe I shouldn't do, but I always think at the end of the day, stories and novels are fiction and we're making them up. Yes. So it doesn't, you know, unless you're, unless you're Hilary Mantel and you're yes. telling the stories of, of Cromwell and that, mm -hmm. I don't think you really need to worry too much. Yes, um, yes. You can borrow a setting or a place mm. or a thing that really happened, but you're not 
writing a non-fiction history book, aren't you? Like you no, say, and, yeah, and you can twist it to your own needs. Yes. And turn it to your own needs for the for the story. Yes. Yes. Because it's a story that matters. It is. Day. It is. Okay, fantastic. So, to sort of sum it all up and to finish off, if you could distill all that down into just one tip for writing, your, your best tip for, for, for writing a short story or a novel or anything at all, what would it be? Right, yes. Easy question. Easy. Let's finish on an easy question, oh, shall yeah. we? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, to be, I mean, looking at it from being a professional writer, it's, it's a scary job in a way. Um, uh, and it can be it can be hard. It can be hard work. Although I always like to say I always like to tell the story about my uncle Terence who worked down a coal mine in the nineteen seventies. That was hard yes. work, and I <laughs> I get to sit at my desk and make things up all day. But it can be hard. It can be lonely, um, and there's a lot of rejection involved mm. as well. Mm. Um, so my top tip really would be. Um, I'm going to say two things. I'm sorry. That's it's okay. Going to be, uh, going back to what I said earlier, read lots and keep writing. Write lots. Don't let uh, rejection put you off. Mm -hmm. That's just one person's opinion. Mm -hmm. And there are plenty of authors out there who have been rejected more times than you would think. Yes, yeah, so, so J.K. Rowling famously, there were loads of publishing mm. houses that turned down Harry Potter and I bet they are kicking themselves but now. That's so, right, yes. yes. Yeah. And um, I know of one writer who's an American thriller writer, I can't remember his name at the moment, mm. but um, I think he holds the record for having a single manuscript rejected the most times. Oh, dear. Um, you know, he, he, it, it's, it's, it can be soul crushing, you know. Mm -hmm. and when, when you get to the stage where you're sending things out and, 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 and getting rejections, I, I try to think of it as a badge of honour. You try and achieve as many as possible. Yes, you know? yes, display them on you. Mm. Yeah. Because that way you're getting the, the mm. book out rather than mm. getting the story out to the competitions or whatever, mm. rather than being too scared to mm. send them out. So yeah, yeah. so you need, a, you need a rejection popping into your inbox every day, you know. Yes, to read it to, to before, you're yes. a, before you're a proper writer. Yes, <laughs> there we go. So you only spurs. That's right, right. yeah. Okay. Well, hopefully that's given you some um, some sort of food for thought um, to to get going with your own short stories. And thank you so much, Ken, for coming that's along okay. and, and sharing your wisdom. And I think I speak for both of us when I say we're really looking forward to uh, to reading all the entries. Absolutely, that they've given. Yes. absolutely yes. Absolutely. So um, get your thinking caps on. If you've got your writer's block, come and watch the video again so you know how to get over it. And we look forward to receiving your entries by the 31st of October, uh, hopefully a suitably spooky date that will stick in the mind.